Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From The Studio on Clubbing TV. And in this episode, I'm gonna be taking a look at another crazy little sort of mental synth, uh, and it's the Soulsby at Megatron. So what exactly is this? Well, it's an 8-bit synth, which means it makes really sort of crunchy and dirty and noisy tones. And if you imagine, 8 bits have got 256 values per sample point. 16-bit, um, like a CD's got something like 65,000 sample values per sample point. And what we use these days is really 24-bit in recording, and that's got over 16 million <laughs> samples uh, or values per sample point. So this has got 256 as compared to um, over 16 million, which gives you an idea of why it may not sound as natural as some other synths, or as pretty much every other synth. And 8-bit chips are the sort of things that used to get in really early games consoles, like the Super Nintendo and the very first home computers like the Commodore 64. And it's why all their sounds and all the games sound a little bit like this. And all those nasty little 8-bit sounds came from this, but this takes things a lot deeper. It's got much, much more complex synth engines. It comes with this one called the App Megatron, as standard, and this is a wavetable synth. But we also have all these different overlays for all the different synth engines you can get for it. So we've got here, we've got um, the Delayatron, and that's a bit like the App Megatron. It's a wavetable synth, but it's got a more complex delay section. And we've got one called strings, which is wavetable again, but it's four note polyphonic. And each of, the, each of the notes or each of the voices can play a different wave shape. We've got one called cyclotron, which cycles through the different wave shapes. So you get some really complex tones. Uh, and then we've got one called the at mega drum. And as you've guessed, this has got a drum machine in it. I think there's four different drum machines or drum sounds you can load for it. And my particular favorite, is the one that this one comes as a special edition, is the Oditron, which is an emulation, an 8-bit emulation of the ARP Odyssey. And it just so happens, I have Korg's mini ARP Odyssey here. And as you can see, this has been painted to look a bit like this, which is, I know it's sad, but that's why I bought that one, because it looks quite cool. And the way you program this is ingenious, and I've put on the Megatron overlay because it's easy to see what's happening. You select the parameter using the left-hand knob, and then you select the value or change the value using the right-hand knob. And it even came with this quick reference guide so you can, without having to turn your head upside down, you can learn what all these, all these symbols mean pretty easily. So how do you change the voices on it? Well, you've got to use a special serial cable. You can see that there. And you upload the different synth engines using their easy uploader software and choosing the serial cables and output and stuff. And when, when you first do this, if you're not used to doing stuff like that on the computer, it sort of feels a little bit like you're hacking into the Pentagon. But actually, once you've done it once, it's really simple. It just doesn't feel as integrated as something that's got USB and online librarians and editors and stuff like that. Okay, now we know what it is. Let's start listening to some of the sounds, shall we? And we'll start off by taking a look at my favorite engine in it, and that's the Auditron. Let's create a really simple tone with just one sawtooth. So here we've got noise or ring mod, and we can see on the left, that's at zero. DCO one, let's put that at zero. And DCO two, let's put that on full. And if it's on white, if this knob's white, it's a sawtooth. And if this knob's red, it's a pulse. So let's try a sawtooth. And you can really hear that horrible digital alias in. Really nasty high up. But not so noticeable lower down. That's really gritty and really unnatural sounding, and that's the sort of really the character of what an 8-bit synth sounds like. 
Sounds a little bit like a little games console. <laughs> but in, in a track with some effects on it, sometimes that gravel and that dirt and that noise really does add to the atmosphere of a sound. Let's now listen to a pulse. So this is now red. And we can go and change the pulse width. We come to DCO2. So DCO2, pulse width is here. So when the knob is white, we're just in the pulse width. And turn it up to get a nice thin pulse. <laughs> God, listen to that. Everything I do on this sounds sort of nasty and vile, doesn't it? But that's a good thing sometimes. Let's add a second oscillator, shall we then? Let's put them both on a sawtooth. And all of a sudden we're getting a sort of quite a nice thick, rich tone. It's also got a resonant low pass filter and a high pass filter. And it's got three modes for the low pass. You've got off, gentle and harsh. So let's have a listen to it off. And these knobs don't do anything. And then we put it on gentle mode, so it's not very resonant. You can hear the algorithms inside not being able to process the information. And then let's put it on the dirty mode. And you can still hear all that noise and the grit in there. So let's put the envelope on a fair bit. And then adjust these parameters here. So a little bit of decay. So again, it doesn't sound crisp, it doesn't sound smooth, it sounds dirty, it sounds, sounds horrible really. But I think it's in a good way. So that's by far my favorite sound engine on the at Megatron. Um, I don't want to sort of put it to shame, but as we've been saying how dirty this is compared to a, to a VCO, let's have a listen to the Korg ARP Odyssey, shall we? And see how, they, how the two of them compare. So we'll start off with a simple sawtooth on both of them. This is the at Megatron. Yeah, it sounds a bit weird and dirty. And here's the ARP. Really precise and clean sounding, isn't it? And let's add a second oscillator on both of them. So oscillator two here, oscillator two there. And on the ARP. So again, the ARP's much cleaner and crisper. Always will be, and this will always be a bit more gravelly, I suppose. Let's add a little bit of filter there, shall we? sounding quite well behaved, isn't it? It's very polite. Uh, considering it was described as the first punk synth back in the 70s, um, I think it's been out punk today by the app Megatron. Let's, uh, let's just do something with the filter on this. I'll put it on the, on the nasty filter type. So let's try a bit of ring mod on that as well. No idea what this is gonna do now. Let's put that on ring mod there, turn that up, turn the oscillators down. I never thought I'd say this, but the Odyssey is sounding really smooth, but you're really hearing the Oditron's um, video game heritage, aren't you? But let's take a listen to some of the other sound engines that you can get with it. 
Now that Megatron sound engine's loaded, it's a completely different synth to what it was when it was the Auditron. What we've got here is a wavetable synth, so we've got 16 different waves. Let's just run through those quickly to give you an idea of the sort of unique sounds this makes. And looking at those wave shapes that you see there, they're all really bitty and strange and stepped and, well, 8-bit-ish, I suppose. But let's try another one. Let's try um, loading in the strings, shall we? So here we have the strings overlay, and we've got a four-note polyphonic string synth. And as it's strings, got to really stick them through a bit of a reverb. I'm using my trusty old Strymon Big Sky, which is absolutely gorgeous for doing this sort of thing. It's got beautiful shimmer algorithm. It's really famous for it. So I know I'm cheating a little bit putting it through a really, really nice reverb. The reverb costs more than the synth, by the way. I think this is around 300, it's over 400 euros, this. And this is around 200 euros. Uh, I'm not sure if they've got any for sale at the minute. They sort of do them in batches and at the minute, Paul Salisbury runs the company. He's, he's creating a new, I think it's an eight voice poly synth based on sort of a digital synthesis. So um, something to look out for there. But just nice to show how you can get some really nice sounding sort of lush sort of tones. From an 8-bit synth. And then finally, let's take a look at the at Mega Drum. So here we go, some really crunchy little 8-bit sounds. So it's a really interesting sounding little thing, isn't it? But is it for you? As I always say with these From the Studio Alien episodes, these things aren't necessarily gonna be the only thing you've got. Although if you've got a lot of soft synths, you've got things in the box and you want a little bit of hardware or something to lift your productions out of the norm, these things are perfect for that. And you know, I, I've really got a sort of soft spot for this. I just love those sort of crunchy tones and comparing it against the Odyssey then really did sort of, sort of bring it home to me how sort of unique this does sound. And don't forget, you can watch this whenever you like on Clubbing TV's YouTube channel on our From The Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer them. And if you are into your synths, your drum machines and your music production, maybe check out Starsky Car YouTube channel as well, where I've got a lot more in-depth and technical reviews and demonstrations of all sorts of studio tech. So, I'll see you in the next episode of From The Studio.